This is going to serve as our hood, shown through the third example in our foldable. The other ones were done in class, either together or on your own. So the first question says, find the expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. Well, in class, we talked about that the perimeter equals the sum of all sides. So we notice here that we are missing some of the sides, uh, angle measure, or the side measure. So we're missing this one, and we are missing this one. So we know that the side length for this whole side here is equivalent to six. And if this side is four, then the remaining measure is two. So now we know that that is two. So now we go back up here. Yes, it looks scary, we've got variables in here. But we do know once again, that if this whole thing here is three A plus four, and this is two A, the remaining has to be the difference. So we have three A plus four minus two A. So we combine our like terms, that gives us 1a plus 4. So that gives us the side length here, 1a plus 4. Again, if we add 1a plus 4 plus 2a, we get 3a plus 4, which is the same as this top length. So now we need to add up all of our sides. So let's start with this one right here. So we'll do 4 plus 3a plus 4, okay? plus 6 plus 2a plus 2 plus 1a plus 4. And what you'll notice is that it doesn't matter if this side length is here or here. It's going to be the same and this is either here or here. It's still going to be the same. So no matter what, I would get the same perimeter whether I cut out a part or not. So, if, as long as I cut it at a right angle. So I'm going to simplify this. I get, I'm going to break it apart, do my combined like terms, okay? They're all addition, so I don't need to change any signs. Okay, so now I have 3a plus 2a plus 1a. That gives me 6a. And then I have 4 plus 4, 8 plus 6 plus 2, that's another 8, there's 16, plus 4 more is 20. So let's go back and check. 4, 8 plus 6, 13. 14, I'm sorry, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Okay, so 6a plus 20. So this is my perimeter. Okay, so then my second part says, what if my perimeter, if the rectangle, uh, if a equal 3 fourths? So I go and I put a in for 3 fourths. I am not going to put it into this big long one. I'm going to use this one. So I say six times three fourths plus 20. Okay, so I'm multiplying fractions. Now the six is a whole number, so I can place it over one. When I multiply fractions, like you've reviewed, we multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. So I get six times three, six, 12, 18. So I get 18 over four plus 20, okay? So what is 18 over four? Four goes into to 16 four times with two left over. So two fourths, which actually becomes four and one half, okay? So this goes to this. And then I add 20. So 20 plus four and a half is 24 and a half inches. Okay, all right, so that is my perimeter. So now let me go ahead and I'm going to erase the perimeter so that I can find the area. The area is what's inside the figure, not 
what's around the figure. So this is different dependent on the fact that this small section is cut out of the larger rectangle. So now my side lengths here and here are very, very, very important. So to find the area of a rectangle, I take length times width, okay? So the easiest way to do this is to take and cut your figure into workable figures. So if I extended this line across, I now have two rectangles, rectangle one and rectangle two, okay? So I need to find the area of both of those and add them together because both of the smaller rectangles make up the larger rectangle. So let's go back and we'll figure out that the area for the top one is length. I'm gonna make, label this length and width. It does not matter because the order does not matter when I multiply. So actually I can write it out like this. Uh, rectangle one is four times three A plus four, okay? And then I have rectangle two and it is two times two A. And what did I say that we needed to do with that? We need to add them, okay? So now I have to do, use my distributive property, all the things that I've done so far. This unit, I take four times three for a 12 A. Four times four is 16. And I'm going to add what is two times two, that is 4a. So now I've done distributive property. Now I need to combine like terms. I have 12a and 4a, which gives me 16a plus 16. Okay, so that is my area of the two figures combined. Okay, so this is my area of entire figure. All right, so we're using everything that we have talked about all nine weeks, combining like terms, distributive property, all of those things in this one problem. So now I'm going to use something else we talked about, and that is substitution. Number four, okay, I've done one, two, three, now I'm at four, and it is to find the area of the rectangle if A equals 1.8. So again, I use this expression. I do not go back to this one because it's too long. I've, already, I've simplified it for a reason. So I take 16 times 1.8 plus 16, okay? So 16 times 1.8 is going to be 28.8 plus 16, 28.8 plus 16 is 44.8 and we said it was feet now area is square feet so we put feet squared or square feet perimeter is just the strictly the straight units okay area is square feet think about when you look down the floor of a classroom there are square tiles that is the area of the floor okay so these are problems that we are going to continue to do. Again, they use all of the things that we have used within the unit. Make sure that you get this copied down.